Hi everyone and welcome to Stamper's Niche. My name is Lillian and I'm happy to be with you tonight. Or tonight, sorry, I usually do Monday nights and I just had a, a little slip there. It is Tuesday morning, June the 13th, 2023. And I'm coming to you live from Alberta, Canada. And I have a card to share with you. Uh, the reason I'm coming a little late is, or had to reschedule is when we were coming home from a funeral we had to pass through an area where forest fires are affecting the road and the road was closed so we had to do a big long drive around so we were all safe everything was fine but it did uh, delay a few things so thank you for bearing with me and joining me now so just before I go down to my desktop, I always like to ask a question because then that gets you commenting and talking to each other, even if it's just saying hi or glad you're here or that kind of thing. But I thought the question I'd give you right now is um, what, what's one activity you enjoy doing in the summer? So what's one summertime activity you enjoy? For myself, I love just spending time in the backyard, um, whether it's picnicking or um, reading my book or whatever. Now, many of you know our backyard is is uh, pretty spectacular thanks to my husband's efforts. So I am spoiled that way, and um, but that's one thing I really enjoy. So. Um, let me know what you enjoy doing in the summertime. And I'm just going to make sure that this is all set up and that I've shared it to my other page. And while I'm doing that, a couple of things to uh, bring to your attention. Oh, good. I see some of you saying hello and good morning. And I love that. Thank you. Even if you're watching this later or you're on YouTube or whatever, do make sure to, to leave a greeting or a comment. It just uh, makes us all feel connected and it's lots of fun. So there is a brand new paper pumpkin kit uh, just being released. It fits perfectly with summer activities and it's called Fun in the Sun. So this is a kit that would be delivered to your door. You have to order it before July 10th. Um, and it has nine cards, three each of three designs, and the coordinating envelopes, and they're fun folds. So they are going to be accordion folds, so it's just a whole lot of fun. Plus, what's more, you also get um, the stamp to go with it, um, some uh, pearlescent backed sequins, some, some different embellishments or type of... Um, sticker types of things that you can use, uh, die cuts, and the Daffodil Delight Stampin' Spot. So this looks like just one really fun kit. So just so that you're aware of that. And um, there we go, just like that. And the other thing is, during the month of June, there are a couple of specials going on, and I just, I really want you to be aware of them. So the starter kit during the month of June, for you can choose of your choice, anything of your choice, $206 worth of product for only $135. So if you have a long wish list, this might be something to consider. Um, the other thing is you get an extra paper pumpkin kit in there, or not an extra, you get a paper pumpkin kit. Um, you also don't have shipping or hand and handling or GST, and there's no long-term commitment. You can do, with being a demonstrator, you can just be a happy shopper and enjoy the discount, or you can you have a little business or get together with friends. It's totally up to you what you do with that. The other thing is, is there is the Designer Series paper sale, and you really can't go wrong with Stamping Up's Designer Series paper. It is gorgeous, gorgeous paper. So 13 different papers are on sale for 15% uh, off. So let me just refresh your memories a little bit. There's the Bright and Beautiful, the Countryside, the Delightfully Eclectic, the, oh dear, I'm trying to, uh, Earth and Elegance, Fresh as a Daisy, Glorious Gingham, which we're going to use again today, Hello Irresistible, the Inked Botanicals, I've got some of these ordered, I'm hoping they're here soon, um, Les Shop, 
um, Let's Go Fishing, Masterfully Made, Stargazing, which I used last week, and Zoo Crew. So if any of those designer papers are on your wish list, or if you think you'd like to give them a try, now's the time to, to give them an order, uh, to order them. So hello, oh, I'm so glad so many of you are joining us, excellent. Today, I wanted to use, once again, the Country a Gingham designer paper. So it's, remember, it's like this. I used this one um, a few videos ago to, to make this treat holder. So um, that might just jog your memory a little bit. So the gingham paper has the larger gingham on one side and the smaller gingham on the other. So you have the best of both worlds. And today I'm going to use the Pretty Peacock. Number one, it's a returning core color. It's a gorgeous color and it will work well for masculine cards. And Father's Day is coming up and I'm sure you've got some male birthdays as well coming up in your um, in your family or in your acquaintances. So this is the Pretty Peacock and I can choose which side to use. So Pretty Peacock is this paper here and I looked at a couple of papers to coordinate with it. So let me just go like this and I decide I was going between these two for the card that I was wanting. They both look great with it. So Pecan Pie is another brand new color, but I chose to go with Crumb Cake. I wanted to go slightly lighter. So these are this is the color combo that we're using today along with this paper here. So the, pa the card is actually going to go this way and this designer paper is just going to be along the edge. So do you want what we'll call the large gingham or the small gingham? Large or small? Let me know in the comments as I'm uh, getting ready here. Large or small? Yes, both of them look fabulous with the peacock. I am really, really excited about that. So what we're going to start with is with a piece of um, large. Okay, we're going to go with the large side. Thank you. That's the first one I saw. So we're going to start with a piece of um, uh, cardstock, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. So it's just a half sheet of cardstock the long way and then folded in half. So that's pretty basic. This card today is actually just a fairly basic card, but sometimes those are the best, right? So then we've got a piece of the gingham paper. So I had it cut because it didn't matter, right? One and three quarters by four and a quarter. So that is going to go along here. Now, here's your question. This We're thinking that this is for guys. Should we leave it plain or should we tear the edge? Straight or torn? And while you're doing that, I'm going to keep talking. Um, so he, then we're going to take a piece of the crumb cake that's approximately the ish is here. Lynn saying torn. Okay, we'll go with torn. Two and a half by four ish. Um, so if, if you want it, it's going to go like that. I chose to cut it out with the deckled rectangle dies because it's got that little... Um, ruffled edge but you can cut it out just as a rectangle so it's about that size and we're going to use two of them because I'm going to use one on the inside and so and then we've got some scrap paper that we're going to use here so let's just tear the edge of this and those of you who don't want it torn you know what you can always recreate this without it torn and it will look good either way. So we're going to fasten this down right now. Now, if you notice, I was tearing, pulling this paper towards me. That's how I get the white edges. And you can always sponge those edges if you want. You can bring in an emery board. I usually have one right here. It's missing in action and rough them up even more. But we're going to go just like this and just stick it down. This is pretty easy going here with this card. Whoops, throw my glue around and 
just like that and it's going to go top to bottom and along the fold so now we've got that oh i love that together okay sorry i just had i haven't been able to craft it seems like for months it's been very spotty we were away at a funeral this last week and um so i just haven't been in my craft room much and i'm really missing it now we can leave it just plain and that go with that or we can bring in the meta uh, an embossing folder and emboss this for a little more texture so i'm going to use the metal plate emboss 3d embossing folder and bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine and when you're embossing you take everything off and just use plate number one when you're using the 3d ones and you're going to also bring in the specialty plate. So how am I going to emboss the whole front of this card? Well, I'm just going to slide it in like this and then try to get the edge sort of on the fold. It can be a smidge beyond and then I know that it's all going to be embossed. And this just adds texture and I always think this adds interest as well. And often with, with a guy card, I like to have texture because you don't, don't tend to off, um, add ribbon and that kind of thing it's once in a while, but it, uh, whichever way. So we run it through like that. And this is where the magic is always. We take the plates away and slide it out and just like that we've got this doesn't that look neat uh, i love it okay so we've got that now this is going to go on here so we could add twine here if we wanted but i think i'm going to just wait now what i was thinking um and i'm sort of making this with you as i go there were i had a couple of thoughts one of my thoughts was that I could add a stamp here. And where did my stuff go? And I could bring in a couple of letters and make it a happy birthday card like that. And then I got thinking, I need some Father's Day cards for people who are not my father. There are some men in my life. But um, so... I thought, what if I just start with the word happy and then I, I can use it for birthdays, I could use it for Father's Day, I could use it for whatever. So I'm going to take this back out and we're going to cut out the letters happy. So we'll clean this off. So I need some um, paper. We're going to use the Alphabet Alamode dies, which I just love because they they work for so many things. So we need an A, H, A, we need an H. I've got an H from the happy birthday, so okay. Then we need a Y and a P, and I've got another P cut out. So we're, we're good to go there. And we're going to also bring in the adhesive sheets. So your adhesive sheets come um, 6 by 12 and what they are is they're just thin sheets that have adhesive on both sides and then a protective backing. So what if you put it on the back of something and cut it out, you've basically made a sticker. I like to make it just a smidge smaller than the cardstock I'm using just so it doesn't overhang and be sticky on my uh, embossing plate plates on the stamp and cut and emboss machine now there's a little slit usually and i just like to push that down a little bit so i if possible leave some of this here so it's easy to handle and my fingers don't get sticky and i'll just put it down here then remove the backing and slide it down just like that so now i've got the backing here I can bring in the letters I need, Y, A, and P. I've got the rest already cut out. So I'll move this to the side and bring our machine back in. 
this time we need plate one like we did before, but we're going to bring it back in plate two and then the two clear plates. So we're going to put this one down. We're going to put what we're going to cut on top. Just like that. Slide it under, run it through. I why I hopped around, but it's still all good. There we go. Now you could easily spell dad. You could spell wow. You could spell any kind of letters, you, words you want. And you could change up the colors and make it for mom or something like that too. But we're going to just go with happy. Let's see, bring the rest of our letters in. There we go, we'll get rid of this. And I'm going to bring my grid paper in. I just cut my grid paper in four so that I could use it on here. I love working with grid paper. So let's bring this back in. So now we have another, another thought that I had, and that is I'm going to be putting these letters on here. Should I do a little background behind just to fill it in a little bit for a little bit of interest? So it would be just like tone on tone stamping just a little bit in the background. What do you think? Should I stamp a background, background or no background? What do you think? Background or no background? And I'll get the ink in just in case you choose a background. Oh, I see background. We'll go with that. Now, I don't know how dark. I'm going to turn it over and try it on there. Okay. Ooh, I like that a lot. This stamp is from Timeless Arrangements, another great new stamp set. Um, so let's see. We'll put... Da, da, da. Yeah, it always helps to sing, right? I think that's likely enough. And that's a nice, a neat little trick, really, is to, if you're not sure, just turn your paper over and practice it on the back and see if you like it like that or not. And what I'm doing now is seeing if I want more stamped or not. And I think I am pretty happy with that. Now you'll notice that I went off the edges and that just really, um, your eye likes that a lot. So, and actually while I've got that out, this is going to go on the inside, but let's put a little bit on here while I've got the ink out. Da da da. There. All set to go. All right, so now it is really easy to to do this. So I like to sometimes I like to start with the middle letter and then work my way out. So we're going to do that for this. I used to it. I don't know how many of you ever took typing in school. I'm dating myself hugely now, but when we were typing we were taught to choose the middle letter and then work our way out if we wanted to center things now the computer just does it for you so we're all happy <laughs> there, there yeah happy um so i'm not pressing it down i'm just resting it now i my goal is to line it up but if i you're having trouble with lining things up you could always do the the mishmash, right? Which would look really good. I could do that the next time. Or I might do it this time if I end up having issues. Um, but we'll, we'll find out. So just like that. 
And now we will go this way. So it's it's easy when you start with the middle letter to get your spacing right. Your word is centered then. So then when I was working, I did a ton of bulletin boards. And so I that was my trick for that too. Isn't it fun how one thing from one part of your life carries over and helps you with another part, all the different skills you learn as you go along. Now, I think that makes me happy. I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to press it down and we're going to put it on here with dimensionals. And I'm going to bring in our black dimensionals just because I have them and I think they would work well here. So we'll turn this over. Put one in each corner and then I like to put one in the middle so it doesn't sag or feel sad. Now before I do this, I need to make a decision. Do I want to wrap some twine around there? Linen thread would look, look good with this. Ooh, my linen thread got a little tangly here. Let's see if I can find an end. There we go. Do I want to add some linen thread? You know what? I think I kind of like it. What do you think? Linen thread or not linen thread? I think it does add a little bit of extra there. Tell me what you th think. Should I, should I add the linen thread? Okay. Yes, thread. Thank you, Roz. I'm going to go. Oh, Debbie, good. We're all in agreement. So let's tack that down there. I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times, maybe even three. Lift up that dimensional and it can hold it down. And we'll decide later if we're going to add a bow. So you can be letting me know if you think we should add a bow with the linen thread. Or, you know what? Sometimes with a guy card, instead of a bow, I do a cross piece. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, no, I think I'll go at an angle. Just like that. So instead of a bow, I'm just going to put this through tie a knot just like that and then I'm going to unravel the ends so it looks a little bit um, I was going to say ratty but I suppose that's not a good crafting term but it just makes it a look look again the texture brings the texture so I use the end of my take your pick tool and just unravel the pieces and it adds just a little bit of a different touch there we go so now we're pretty much finished I was thinking about embellishments and what we might use. You might not use anything. Um, the pretty peacock embellishments. Do you remember the loose frosted dots from the they're on online exclusive? And I have some of them like this, so we could add some of those. So we'll call that pretty peacock or dots. Or we could add some um, what are these called? Rustic metallic, so so metal or dots or nothing. What do you think? Metal, dots, or nothing. Metal. I see metal. Okay, I, I kind of like that too. So let's see, where should we put these? This is where you all start laughing because I take longer to put my embellishments on than anything else. I actually think I'm going to put one over here. 
So just like that, we've got a simple card and you can see how this layout would easily be adapted to any of the designer papers you have and any other occasions. You could do tons of stamping on here. You could do whatever. But now let's look at the inside too. So remember I said that we had this piece right here. So we've got that, which looks lovely. But when I was cutting this piece here, I ended up with this scrap. So I thought, hmm, I wonder what it would look like to go like that. And I really like that, but I want a piece of this actually for something else. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and cut off just a piece. I'm not even going to measure it. Just, I just want a little piece. So, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. And so then I've got this, but I still think it would look pretty good like that. Just brings the colors through to the inside and trying to decide which way I want this. I think I'll go that way. It doesn't really matter. And then you've got the inside of your card. It, the paper carries through. You're using those scraps, which is so much fun. And then once I know what occasion I'm going to use this card for, I can stamp whatever I want in here and still have room to write. So just like that, we've got the outside of the card, we've got the inside of the card. Now, what did I want to do with that little scrap? Well, I don't know if you remember that oh, quite a while back, I got, I showed you this card from Sandy, Sandy Allman, and what she did in the back was brought some of the designer paper to the back and then she signed it. And so I've been doing that. Here's a card. I've done it with the Stamping Up copyright and a little bit of the designer paper. So I wanted to do that again with this. So we're going to add the Stamping Right um, copy mark. Can't even talk here. I'm just going to do tone on tone. So pretty peacock on pretty peacock, just like this. I'm going to stamp first. So if I get it crooked, I can always put the paper over top and stamp again, right? There we go. It's, I think, straight enough. And then I'm going to put this underneath and it just draws attention to it. And then I can put my initials down here or on here, um, whichever. I've stopped putting the date because sometimes I don't give it. Maybe a year has passed or something, it, and it just kind of looks a little bit funny, um, but it, that's a personal preference. So just like that, we have carried it through all the way, and it looks great. Now you can always add bits of the paper to the envelope as well, or some of the stamps to the envelope, and you've got it all good. So um, I hope this has inspired you and given you some ideas, whether it's for the outside, the inside, the back, whatever. It's, uh, it's all good to go. Now I have a few other cards to share with you. I've been fortunate that I've received some cards from people because I haven't been making a whole lot. And so one card that I received is from Karen and I see she's on here today. This is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous card using, um, um, what's it called? Bird's Eye View. And I love books, so I think I might have to do this. I love how Karen has colored this. The colors are amazing. Um, so, Thank you, Karen, for that. And then I received this just today from Joanne. Um, so look at how she's made a border, just punching holes along. And then see what she's done with the ribbon? Just a little loop, and it just adds so much. So that's from my friend Joanne. And then I'm playing around with offering a class um, where you see both sides of the designer paper. Um, this is not part of the class, but I was this I showed when I was doing my um, oh just a second here. It was my slimline card class, use your stash card class. So this design was included in that. So I this will be different, but this gorgeous paper. Let me just open it up. 
is the paper from the Daisy Suite and it's so beautiful. I wanted you to be able to see both sides of it. So here is it closed with the daisies on it. Now the edge here and a little bit of the paper here is actually the back side of this paper, as you'll see when I open it up. So when you open it up, it looks like this and like that. So there is just a one more. That's one of the few things I've had fun making lately. So thank you so much for joining me and for the encouraging words and the well wishes you, that you sent along the way. I hope you have some great time crafting. Take care and have fun. Bye-bye.